Hi, today we're at the surface grinder and I want to show you how to sharpen the flutes on an end mill. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today I'm continuing my series in concert with my last video on how to sharpen end mills where I showed you with a grinding jig how to sharpen the very ends of an end mill. Now I want to show you how to sharpen the flutes. We're going to use this Weldon end mill sharpener and Weldon makes several different versions of this. Plus there's other ideas out there that work fairly well. This one here is really nice and simple. It has different collets in here. This will go 5 8 I've got a half inch collet in here. Then there's some smaller ones which unfortunately I don't have. But this particular one I am going to be selling at the end of this video because I have two of them. My other one's actually an air bearing where this one here is actually just beautifully lapped and matched to this to make it run smooth. Now I know a lot of you are thinking that why don't I just use a spindexer like this and mount it to my surface grinder. Well you can do that but let me show you what makes this Weldon so special in what it does. First of all, how this spindle moves in and out. What that makes sure is that this edge stays parallel to itself. Okay, so it's not going to taper in or taper out. Another thing that makes it unique is it has this stylus, or some people will call it a tool rest, to rest the tool on when you're cutting it. If you were to use the indexer, you're going to have to move the table back and forth to make this work. Another thing you want to see is this has a way of rocking the cutter away from the wheel for when you change to the different flutes. That is why the Weldon works so great because you can literally just take it off your magnet, put it back on, line it up, and go to work. And you can do it relatively quickly. Right now I've got a diamond wheel on here. Uh, CBN actually works better. What we want to do is, of course, put our cutter in. We're going to use a two flute cutter. What you do with this is exactly what you do with a multi flute cutter. Well, this is a multi flute cutter, but you know, when you're getting into fours, six, eights, etc. Also, the accuracy is held within this tool and it is easier to use than the end mill sharpening fixture that I showed in the last video. So what we want to do here is get the stylus lined up to the wheel or we want the stylus right in the center of this flute. And the reason that you do that is it helps keep it guided. If you put it up here, the stylus actually is flexible and can move around. So you want to get that right in the middle and that's what you're going to guide on. The other thing we want to talk about is the angle of this. Now if we were to make this perfectly tangent, what would happen is this edge here would come straight out and when we had cut, this would cut and this back corner would rub. So what we want to do is get this relief cut just down a slight angle so when it comes around it doesn't clip. And there are formulas for that for the different size cutters. But I'm going to stay away from formulas and charts on this because I want you guys to experiment on your cutters because if I give you a number and it doesn't work on your machine you'll get mad at me. So we're not going to do that now. Some of you are also going to ask well why am I not using the tool cutter grinder to sharpen this? And it's really simple. The reason I'm not doing that is because I'm trying to show you how to do it on a surface grinder, not a tool cutter grinder. Now, stylus, we can move up and down with a screw here. And we're just going to get this lined up. Like I said, we want it lined up so it's inside the middle of the flute. And just down at a slight angle. That should work. Going to back this off a little bit, see how it looks. Nice. We turn the grinder on. We're going to start at the shank and pull it forward. And remember, we're going to rest on that tooth, and it does take some feeling to get this right. I'm going to listen for it just to slightly touch. I'm 
Move it in a thousandth. Pull it back. Try the other side. This is the way I test to see if it's sharpened. It's going to go in another thousand. Much better. Now there is of course a burr on here and you can feel the burr. That's another way to check if it's sharp. This is the primary cutting angle that we've sharpened. Now we need to sharpen the secondary angle. If I was doing a whole series of cutters right now, I'd pick all the exact same ones and sharpen the primary cutting surface first and then I would do the secondary. And what it takes to do the secondary angle is we need to rotate the cutter down and take off this facet back here. So we're going to simply move this down again. There are proper numbers and formulas for this, but we're just going to fake it. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to raise this up. I'm going to look at this gap right here. And that's about right. And that's just basically out of experience where I put that. Now since the tooth is lower, the cutter also is going to be angled lower. Back it off a little bit. Now we're going to go in for the secondary flute. Same thing, we're just going to come in very tight. Try it. Go to the next flute. Go on a couple thousandths. You can see that I definitely was having some problems here. I'm not exactly sure what happened. We're going to call it operator error. You can now see where I brought in that secondary angle and then that relief. And again, there's certain dimensions that you're supposed to get there to determine when to cut it. Now, one of the things you can tell by the way this was cutting that somebody had already pre-sharpened it. You can also tell at the end somebody actually hand sharpened this end and of course didn't do a very good job. But that's what you're going to discover when sharpening your end mills. Like I said on my last video is you're going to find out a lot of these have already been pre-sharpened. It's just surprising how many of them have been. And now you're going to add to that. Now not all of these are sharpenable. This one here, if you look at the secondary angle, it has been sharpened completely down and out. This cutter actually is probably no good unless I want to add relief all the way back here and I don't know if it's actually worth taking the time. 
Um, I'll study a little bit closer and see if I can't. Well, you see this mar right here? Bet there's one. Yep, there's one on this side. That means when this was coming around cutting, it was hitting right there. So this cutter is probably time to throw it out or use it for something else, something creative. I'm not exactly sure. Well, there you guys go. That's how you sharpen the side or the flutes of an end mill. Remember, don't forget my first video. I'll put a tag or something, some way of referencing it. If you like this video, give me some thumbs up. Also, give me your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.